This video reviews the work by McGuire, Frakwiak, and Frith from 1997, entitled Recalling Routes Around London, Activation of the Right Hippocampus in Taxi Drivers. The goal is to have you understand the paper in 10 minutes or less. The main topic of this paper is topographical memory, or memory for large-scale environments. Consider, for example, your knowledge of the layout of the closest shopping mall. Knowledge about this spatial layout likely occurred over many instances of you shopping there. Each episode helped you to remember something new about the mall layout. For this reason, topographical memory is usually considered, quote, episodic memory. However, sometimes particular environments become so well known to you that the memory of them becomes part of all the general facts you know about the world. For example, imagine you wake up in the middle of the night and need a glass of water. As you stumble in the dark with your eyes half closed to the kitchen, get a glass from the cabinet, and pour some water from the fridge, you don't have to be thinking explicitly about where each of these things is located. Instead, you navigate them rather automatically. Knowledge of environments like this one fall into the realm of, quote, semantic memory, or memories for knowledge about the world. In this research, investigators were interested in answering three main questions related to semantic topographical memories. 1. Are the same brain areas activated for semantic topographical memories and episodic topographical memories? You know, the difference between your kitchen and the mall. 2. What brain areas are activated when recalling famous landmarks? And 3. Are the same brain areas activated for semantic memories regardless as if they are topographical or not? The participants in this study were London taxicab drivers whose driving routes should fall into the category of semantic topographical memory. This study used positron emission tomography, or PET, to measure brain activity. How does positron emission tomography work? Here are the basic steps. Step 1. Participant drinks some radioactive sugar liquid. Don't worry, it's harmless. Step 2. Participant lays in PET scanner and completes some sort of activity. The PET scanner measures the metabolism of the sugar liquid the participant drank. Researchers assume that the more active a brain area is, the more sugar it needs to sustain that activity. So what the PET scan is measuring reflects brain activity during the task. Step 3. The output from the PET scanner software is a colored map of brain activity. Areas in red usually reflect where metabolism is highest, while blue areas reflect an absence of activity. Overall, this process allows us to measure indirectly what regions of the brain are active during certain tasks. So, we have to be very careful to design useful tasks. This study was a 2x2 two two within subjects design. This means that there were a total of four conditions that each participant completed. Let's review the conditions. The two independent variables were one, topographical memory, indicated by either a T plus for topographical or T minus, not a topographical memory, and sequence. The retrieval either did S plus or did not S minus require recalling a specific sequence of events. For this experiment, the task that required retrieving a topographical memory and a sequence of events was recalling a specific taxi route. For example, how do you get from London Square to Buckingham Palace? The task that required topographical memory but not a sequence of events was recalling a famous landmark. So you have to know where a landmark is, but there's no sequence involved in remembering it. The task that was semantic but not topographical memory with a sequence was recalling the plot of a film. The task that was semantic but not topographical and did not require a sequence was recalling particular frames within a film. Let's take a look at the results. First, a reminder of our three main questions. Are the same brain areas activated for semantic, topographical, and episodic topographical memories? What brain areas are active when recalling famous landmarks? And are the same brain areas active for semantic memories, whether or not they are topographical? We'll answer these questions one by one. So, are the same brain areas activated for semantic topographical and episodic topographical memories? 
Researchers found the answer to this question was yes. The same brain regions are active for topographical memories regardless of whether they're episodic like the mall map or semantic like the layout of your house. If we compare the brain activity during the routes task to activity during the landmarks task, we see that the right hippocampus is the brain area that underlies topographical memories. The brain regions in this image, which reflect activation during both semantic and episodic topographical memories, are the right hippocampus in yellow, bilateral medial parietal lobe in blue, bilateral posterior cingulate cortex in purple, and bilateral parahippocampal gyrus in orange. The most important of these to the authors is the right hippocampus because they have shown it to be active in previous studies of topographical memory retrieval. What brain areas are activated when recalling famous landmarks? Two important things to note about the answer to the second question. First, the right hippocampus is not activated, indicating that maybe the hippocampus is crucial for navigating a topographical space. Landmarks are in a single location, so no navigation is necessary, therefore there's no activity in the right hippocampus. The second important thing to note is that the left lateral prefrontal cortex, shown in yellow here, is active. The LPFC activity is pretty difficult to explain, but since the landmarks were not grounded in a topographical environment, the researchers think maybe LPFC is active because the participants are finding the landmark difficult to imagine. And third, are the same brain areas activated for semantic memories, whether or not they're topographical? The brain region showing activation during recall of topographical semantic memories is different from those activated during non-topographical semantic memories. This image from the article shows the regions activated for topographical semantic memories, which are different from those underlying non-topographical semantic memories. These regions are bilateral medial parietal regions in yellow, posterior cingulate cortices in blue, fusiform gyri in red, and parahippocampal gyrus in orange. So what? Well, overall, this study tells us important things. First, the brain regions for topographical memory, both new and well-established, are the same. As a reminder, these areas include medial parietal cortex, posterior cingulate cortex, parahippocampal gyrus, and right hippocampus. And also, the processing of non-topographical semantic memories activate left frontal regions, but not the hippocampus. Maybe, just maybe, the researchers think there's something special about how the brain processes topographical memories.